and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we're revisiting Moist Stompy, or blue-green aggro, whatever you want to say. Uh, I don't feel like there's been a tremendous amount of change to the deck, except I wanted to get Vivian Champion of the Wilds in the deck to give the deck a little bit more resiliency to flyers, using that plus one for target creature against vigilance and reach because what's better than your six per six hex proof six six hex proof vigilant reach and then i also want to use the minus two to gas up a little bit harder and have more game against control the minus two giving your creatures flash and well the minus two isn't that's the static but the minus two helping you find more creatures and try and have the right creature at the right time i think adds a lot of dimension to the deck. Vivian is a slight nombo with Nullhide Ferox, so your Ferox either has to die, or your Vivian has to come down first, or you have to pay an outrageous amount for your Champion of the Wilds, but I think those things are a small price to pay for the amount of power that Vivian presents. It's hard to really quantify Vivian if you haven't played with her before until you see her on the battlefield. The ability to flash in creatures to grow your pelt collector at instant speed or create a suddenly threatening board out of nowhere or ambush the opponent with a Galta is pretty epic. And the ability of the Champion of the Wilds to minus two and hide a creature from either hand disruption, uh, wraths, all kinds of things, and then play it at instant speed out of nowhere is pretty useful. I like Thorn Lieutenant in the two spot right now, as opposed to cards like Merfolk Branch Walker, Wild Growth Walker. Uh, Crawl Harpooner goes to this spot a lot, but I just don't see it. I don't see that many big flyers around. Maybe it's I'm biased to what I play against, but I like to beat Red. And Thorn Lieutenant is decent against Red, and also decent against Teferi Time Raveler, because if the opponent bounces the Thorn Lieutenant, they leave you with a 1-1, who can then kill the Time Raveler for good. The power of the deck is certainly in Steel Leaf Champion, Nullhide, Ferox, and Galta, Primal Hunger, bringing the beats, and Departed Deckhand, making them unblockable, can have a big effect on the game and help you win board stalls. Let's go play a few games of best of one and see how the deck does. I don't think it's a top tier contender right now. I don't think it's a best of three deck for sure. But in best of one, if there's enough red and kind of other aggro-y decks that aren't as big as this, it's a very, uh, very powerful threat indeed. Our opener has a turn two Thorn Lieutenant, turn three Vivian, turn four Nullhide, and then a Frilled Mystic hopefully to protect it. What are we naming with that unclaimed territory? Probably right now we can name Wizard or I, I think if we just name Elf it's the right move. Uh, we have another blue source for a deckhand so we don't have to name Spirit and those are usually the two things, Elf and Spirit. Keepsies. Our opponent takes a mull to six so right away a tiny bit of advantage and our opponent scries to the bottom so beware of some kind of hand that's either very full of land or very short of it and our opponent with a turn one mountain well i think we all know what's coming let's play the thorn lieutenant instead of the departed deck hand in case of a shock although we don't see one there and a oh oh green mana well this has to be an interesting and possibly good matchup. Our opponent, without question, is going to want to um, play a bunch of creatures. And I think our creatures can go a little bit bigger. One of the odd questions here is with Growth Chamber Guardian. Because Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, um, very much wants to come down. I think that the right play here is going to be to play Vivian plus it, attack with the Thorn Lieutenant with Vigilance, when the opponent attacks my Vivian next turn with the Guardian, don't block, let it adapt. Vivian goes to one. The following turn, we have the Nullhide Ferox. And the Nullhide Ferox can ambush the Growth Chamber Guardian. So that's planning three turn. That's that's planning a few turns in advance here. Let's see how it pans out for us. Our Vivian going to one means it will be a long time before it can minus to draw some cards, which is a bit dangerous. Opponent checking on their hand, deciding what nonsense to get up to. It is their whole turn if they decide to adapt this Growth Chamber Guardian, which means they won't have more creatures on the board for next turn. Which means Thorn Lieutenant gets in a few more times, and of course Nullhide does its thing. 
And here comes the attack. No blocks. Now the opponent could choose not to adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian, but that means we get to minus Vivian and basically draw a card next turn. The so it's going to be like that, huh? Interesting. Does the opponent have a lightning strike? No, they have a spell breaker. Okay. Very interesting. So now what we could do is plus the Vivian, but then if either of these creatures reach the Vivian next turn, it dies. So I want to minus the Vivian now and get some value. Wait, you think nature is kind? I have this funny feeling I'm going to need a lot of Nullhide Ferox in this game. Our opponent's creatures are big, but they're not as big as that. We'll play this land. We'll kick it over to our opponent with our flash creatures ready to go. Our Frilled Mystic isn't very good this turn. The problem with it is if we counter something, we don't have good blocks against the opponent's stuff. The opponent could reach out and try to tag Vivian with a burn spell, which at this point I would welcome since we're already up a card. We have to remember if they do that to flash the Ferox in right away. Mobilize District. Our opponent using the creature land. Yay! We won the Hunger Games. But interesting card. For four mana, it can become a 3-3. Three, three. Our opponent, it, it might be a clue that our opponent's playing some Planeswalkers. And here comes a something. Maybe. Ah, the Growth Chamber attacks the face. Well... Let's drop a beastie on him. Before blockers, Nullhide Ferox. I probably should have played the one from the hand and left the mystery card alone, but I don't think it matters against red green. It matters a lot against um, against decks with Thought Erasure. Well, I guess against Thought Erasure, I want to keep this in my hand because they might take it. All right, do I block a Growth Chamber Guardian? I don't think so. I mean, it would take a lot of my opponent's mana, but it, well, the opponent's going to want to deal with this Ferox, too. If I block here, the opponent has to choose. They either plus their Guardian and keep it and kill my Thorn Lieutenant, or they pay two and Lightning Strike or shock the Ferox or something like that, or they have to shock the Vivian. I think forcing their mana here is a good play. Forcing them to do it all. And they choose to go with the Guardian. Let's see if they also have a shock up their sleeve for the Vivian. Thorn Lieutenant's not doing too much here, so I think it's a fine a fine move, and the opponent, without another play, does end up with all their critters tapped. So now, let's give you that Vigilance and that Reach, and let's send you in for more damage. Hell yeah. There we go. Tear it down. Tear it all down. Another Unclaimed Territory, and let's kick the turn over to our opponent. Our flash creatures ready to do their work. All the options. We could unleash the deck hand and the steel leaf champion. We could also counter the growth chamber guardian, although I'm not really afraid of this at all. So it's not something I want to use a mystic on. Our opponent didn't make a land drop this turn, not yet. And it looks like they're not going to. So they're a little constrained on mana and we know they have plenty of spells. We know one isn't a shock or I think they would have shocked the Vivian Reed last turn. So, under those conditions, is it right to play out a deck hand and a Steel Leaf Champion and pressure our opponent that way? Should we play another Nullhide Ferox? I don't like two Nullhide Feroxes in case I want to play another Vivian Champion of the Wilds and I draw it because then I'd have to pay seven for it. I know that it's the biggest and the bestest, but in this case, I, I want to go with the mana efficient play and two creatures. We see the stick. It seems like our opponent's sitting on a lightning strike. So if they want to use that to get rid of the Vivian, so be it. What can you do? But they're still going to have to deal with our board. And our board is going to be very aggressive. There's the strike. So in response, we have to play our other flash creature, or we won't get a chance to once Vivian dies. I've seen worse. And the opponent had an upkeep stop set, presumably to play around Frilled Mystic, but now there's no point as they're tapped out. So may I please take my turn now? They're going to read Departed Deckhand. Gets a lot of damage through. And we did draw the other Champion of the Wild. See, if I had the Null Hide down, this would be almost uncastable. As it is, I can pay five to cast it. I don't know if that's what I want to do, especially with a Frilled Mystic in hand and being this far ahead on the board. I think I'm just crashing. 
just attacking. The opponent picking on the Ferox. I'm picking up two creatures. Yeah, I do think I just want to hold up Frilled Mystic this far ahead on board with the opponent on a one turn clock. And now a possible changing of the mind. Growth Chamber Guardian. Yeah, you can't block the Departed Deckhand. This is unblockable. Well, unless you are a spirit, that is. So that pulls the opponent back into the I'm going to block your Null Hide zone. Down to five. Your turn. The opponent needs to provide a blocker for the champion and remove the deck hand, or else it can make the champion unblockable. Let's see what they've got. And they have a, they have scoop. Scoop is what they have. No thank you. <laughs> I think it was a, a situation they were unlikely to escape anytime soon. Well, we have a Pelt Collector on the play, but then we don't have a play till Vivian or Steel Leaf. I still think we can keep it. Our opponent brought the Nicole Bolas Avatar. Ferocious. And a Hollowed Fountain to lead off, and hey, we found a play. Something. Better than nothing, I think. Let's go collect some pelts. I think a Thought Erasure is about to make my day very sad. Taking one of my better cards for sure, but can't take both, and they op occupy the same spot in the curve, so the opponent's going to be under pressure. If they take the Vivian, then we kind of know that they have good removal for the Steel Leaf, and that's a bit of a heartbreaker, but I still think we have to play it. Pump it up. Primarily because growing the Pelt Collector is our best path to victory now. Oath of Kaya. Oh. Well, that doesn't kill the champion. It does repair the opponent's life total very well. Well, that is an unfortunate flood at the wrong time. I could have played the Unclaimed Territory to bluff a Frilled Mystic, but if the opponent played anything or saw the timer go past, they'd immediately know I don't actually have something. So I think a, a bad bluff in that case. And the opponent with a Thought Erasure stuck on land. And here comes that... Unclaimed territory as the opponent thought he raced nothing. The lands are getting ridiculous. But the opponent finds land number four off the top. Is it Kai's Wrath? No. It's an enigmatic an enigmatic mentor, which can't block the Steel Leaf champion. Perhaps the opponent should have taken the Steel Leaf if they did not have a solution to it, and that is a clutch draw. So Steel Leaf is going face, without question. These little tutus can't do anything about it. We don't want to give our opponent free life. And if there isn't the perfect answer right here, right now, this one is done. Plus it has to get around Frilled Mystic. The opponent gets to loot. The Elder Spell hits the graveyard. I would love to know what the opponent's hand was like back when they did the thought back when they use the Thought Seize. Um, let's let this resolve. It doesn't change the situation on its own. The Thought Seize, I, I mean the Thought Erasure. I would love to know what they had in their hand that could kill the champion, or what was going through their mind that could handle the champion. They take it to Fairy, that won't solve the problem. Here's the Cast Down, here's the Frilled Mystic, and that's the game. All right, this is awkward. I would love to just play this Thorn Lieutenant and then play this Vivian and I'd be okay with that. But it's not clear I'll ever cast these Departed Deckhands or this Frilled Mystic. So this is kind of a four card hand and it needs to be mulliganed and I'm glad I did. Now we just need to find a land off the top and we have a pretty sick curve. If we find two lands off the top, I mean, this is, this is about as ideal as it gets. Only like a Llanowar Elf Start would be better. And of course our opponent immediately shows us a Llanowar Elf Start. Let's hide our blueness. Leave the opponent thinking mono green thoughts as long as possible. It might affect the way they handle the board. And are we against ramp? Is this going to be a Nissa deck? So far we see plenty of blue green going on. And the opponent says go, which 
That seems like a growth spiral to me, but if it's a counter spell, we just have to get it out of their hand. Oh, and they have nothing. Okay, then. Hiya. So, will this be a, let's see, four mana here. It's often a Chemister's Insight, a Frill Mystic, or a Hydroid Crassus. And if we see nothing here, I think we can guess it's a Mystic. But it could, well, whether or not to run the Vivian into it doesn't sound very good. We could hold back the Thorn Lieutenant so that, but the Thorn Lieutenant would just trade with the Mystic, which isn't too bad. And then we get to resolve the champion. So yeah, let's just send the team. I think the opponent will flash in a Frilled Mystic if they have it to block the Thorn Lieutenant. They don't. So I'm going to play this out. If they have a Frilled Mystic, they counter it. But I don't think they do. I think they have a Chemistry's Insight. Interesting. They chose to go to one. Hmm. That surprises me a lot. We're basically one growth on the Pelt Collector away from being Trample, and how is the opponent going to stop that? Here's Nyssa. That's two creatures, not three. What was the plan of not flashing in that Thrilled Mystic for the Thorn Lieutenant trade? I don't know. The opponent needs a Fog here, I guess. It's not happening. All right, good game. <laughs> Don't know what the plan was. Well, those were some quick smashings with a moist, stompy deck that it certainly does that. If you get out ahead of your opponent and you're on the play and you've got the power, you just bash right through. And I think that's where it's at its best, is right here in best of one. Just that tiny bit of disruption from Frilled Mystic to steal a game or two. Big powerful creatures that most people aren't playing. Smashing on Planeswalkers, smashing on little red things. That's where the deck is. Uh, I would not play it in best of three, but here in best of one, I really like the deck. I hope you'll give it a try if you're into green things, doing green stuff. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video.